So in this video, I'd like to go over the transformation method of handling constraint at the structural level. So we have our equilibrium equations, uh, PF minus PFW equals the internal forces AF transpose PB. Okay, so this was from a few lectures ago. Okay, so uh, we can show using the principle of virtual displacements that when we use the transformed degrees of freedom or get the retained degrees of freedom using our transformation equations that the equilibrium equations become something like this all right where basically we pre-multiply the equilibrium equations on both sides by tf transpose okay so that's just that's mapping all of our degrees of freedom uh, down to the uh, retained degrees of freedom okay so these equation one is our retained uh, equilibrium equations okay then we can insert the constitutive equations into the right hand side uh, right there okay and we get equation two okay then we can insert our compatibility equations into the right hand side okay so we're combining equilibrium compatibility and constitution just like we did with the displacement method okay but then we get down to uh, equation three uh, after we insert the compatibility equations into the uh, equilibrium equations okay then inserting our transformation equations into the nodal displacements uh, right here we just expand these equations out even further okay so we have still have our external work on this side okay then we have the effect of our retained degrees of freedom some effects of support displacements uf0 and ubc and then also the effects of fixed and basic forces all right all transformed to the nodal degrees of freedom and then transformed again to the uh, retained degrees of freedom okay so uh, we can move all the load effects onto the right hand side or excuse me move all the load effects onto uh, one on one side and then keep the stiffness term uh, on the other side okay so we're going to take this term leave it where it is and then just move all the other stuff over to the left hand side and then just swap things around okay but what we end up with is this matrix right here which is a big triple product of a triple product uh, times our vector of unknown uh, retained displacements equals all this stuff on the right hand side which is load effects all right so we have pf minus pfw pb0 ubc and then uf0 which is from uh, support displacements acting on the constrained degrees of freedom okay but you know we notice on the left hand side that we have our regular KFF matrix uh, in there, and it's multiplied on the left and right by TF transpose and TF, our transformation matrix. Okay, so uh, basically we end up with the familiar set of equations. Oops, sorry about that. Okay, where we have what KFF, UF. All right, uh, equals PF tilde. So that was our uh, original set of equations, equilibrium equations without any constraints. Okay, so it looks a lot like uh, what we have here. We have KFF, we have PF hat, okay, pre multiply by TF transpose, and on the right, TF, pre multiply here, TF transpose, and then we have KFF again on the right hand side, all right, times our vector of support or effects of support displacements, but the primary unknown in this equation is the retained nodal displacements, okay? Okay, so um, once we solve this, everything over here is uh, able, we're able to form uh, PF tilde, KFF, UF naught, and then uh, solve for uh, UFR, okay? But once we do that, okay, after solving for UFR, Okay, 
then we can recover all of our nodal displacements uh, via this equation 6 down here. Okay. Okay, so this is a fairly computationally intense uh, method to implement at the structural level, all right, because the transformations uh, reduce the size of our stiffness matrix, which is not a bad thing, all right, but it also uh, increases or changes the topology of the matrix all right, of, compared to what we assemble for the unconstrained uh, structure. Okay. We can also uh, carry out these transformation equations at the uh, element level, all right, but this gets a little bit tricky uh, with the programming all right, in terms of ensuring that retained degrees of freedom for one element are not treated as condensed degrees of freedom for another element. So making sure that information's not lost in inter-element uh, communication, if you will. Okay, so we'll just deal with uh, transformation method at the structural level uh, in this class. Okay, okay, but uh, once we have the nodal displacements from equation six, right, we can go back and recover our reactions. Okay, so with UF known, we can assemble uh, our reactions from all of these known quantities in the standard way, uh, same same way as before. Okay. Um, but when we do this, uh, we're generally not going to recover the correct reactions, as we'll see uh, in our example, just because we lose information when we uh, transform into the retained degrees of freedom. Okay. And again, we'll see that uh, through an example. But the other two methods that we'll talk about, uh, the Lagrange and the penalty method, uh, they both retain uh, the uh, correct reactions. All right. Okay, in terms of implementation, uh, the transformation method is pretty straightforward. All right. So once we have KFF and TF, we can form KFF for the transformation method just by the triple product. And then we can also form the load vector for the transformation method as the you know, TF transpose times our equivalent nodal loads minus KFF times UF0. And then we just solve all right, for the retained displacements, and then we recover uh, the displacements, and then we recover the reactions. Okay, So we'll look at that or this process uh, through an example in another video, but I just wanted to kind of do a brief overview of the equations here. Okay, thank you.